afternoon all uh tier three welcome um to my kitchen sunny sunny day what a beautiful day um just wait and see uh, we're going to talk about well-being today but i hope everyone as well um just sort my tea out i've got jeff cake i've just gone jeff cakes again do like a jeff cake um yeah well-being i've got a question i've had my hair cut uh so um that's not looking too bad now um so things that are improving i've got a question um obviously um now i don't know if anybody's seen it in the news today but um there's something about there's something about football in the news i don't know if anybody's managed to catch any of that um so i thought i'd ask a question about football um you don't need to know anything about football um but what i want to know is um obviously Everybody's talking about it, but six clubs are looking to break away and form a, another league. And what I want to know <laughs> is how many, roughly, I haven't got an exact figure, so we're just going roughly, but the nearest to my rough is good enough. Roughly, how many football clubs are there in England affiliated to the FA? How many clubs? That's my question. How many clubs are affiliated to the English FA? Roughly. Hi, James. You all right? Nice easy question for you. Football question. I know you're a massive football fan. Um, so that's my question. How many football how many football how many football clubs are affiliated to the English FA? <laughs> for, for him, you're guess of 156. I'm prepared to let you have another guess. It is a lot more than 156 because there's 92 league clubs. Um, and then we kind of go down 156 and a half. That will be the Spurs team because um, they've only got half a manager at the moment. Right? Um, 157. Remember, there's 92 in the league. 92 in the league. And then just to let you know, because I quite like a bit of non league football, you've got National League, National League North, National League South, Northern Premier League. There's a lot of teams. I'll give you a clue. If I add all the guesses up at the moment, we're not right. So you can have another guess. That that is absolutely true, Kev, and that has been demonstrated by your guess. <laughs> uh, these are these are truly shocking guesses. Um, still, if you add them all up, we're not even we're not even close. Seven hundred, seven hundred, you know, six hundred eighty-four, seven hundred. You can all have another guess. I'm shocked. Getting better. Um, but not a lot, to be honest. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, should we do some work? Wow, this question. I'm, wow, I'm really surprised. Uh, but anyway, let's do. So we're going to do some work on well-being because it's quite. It's a it's a hot topic at the moment, well-being, and uh, we've been pushing some stuff out even within the business at the moment about well-being. So what is it? Um, a lot of people think you know oh, it's just like looking at yourself. And that's it, really. But it's a bit more than that. It is moment to moment, and that's a key thing. Uh, that's a key thing I'm abusing even the people who have tuned in for him. Um, um, so it is moment to moment, but it's more than that. So it's about sometimes purpose. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's all those amateur Sunday teams. They're, really, they're all affiliated to the FA. That's where the FA makes all its money, to be fair. Um, so there's, there's other things about it. It's about giving purpose to your life. There's about control. There's about setting yourself goals. Self-discipline is really crucial to effective well-being because I think we probably all know when perhaps we're doing too much or we need a break. Um, and, you know, that's one of the things, you know, this is episode 61. We're trying to do this, this 10-minute break that you can have on a Tuesday. That's just a very small thing, but one thing that could help well-being because you learn really useless facts on it as well. So I'm going to talk about five things, five things that are really useful for well-being. And the first one I'm going to talk about is connecting with others. Um, so that's a really important part of well-being. And the reason that that helps you is because it helps you belonging and feeling of self-worth. It, it gives you an opportunity to share positive experience. So good news stories are always nice to hear. And it means that it builds support for you and for other people. So there's that element about it. So what can we think about? Well, there's some certain things that we can do personally. and There's some things we can do professionally, which will help. So. Firstly, we can talk about eating together. That would be good as a family, eat together. And um, I remember a long time ago, actually, um, I don't know if anybody remembers the programme, 
uh, Jamie Oliver did something about uh, like um, Jamie's dinners or something. He was trying to get everybody to cook and like share food together and everything. And he said he wanted everybody to share a meal together at a table. And he kind of went around some houses and some like 70% of the houses he went into didn't have a table. So that was one, <laughs> that was one of his biggest problems. <laughs> they didn't even have a table to sit around. Um, but eat together as a family. Other, 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 um, other, other um, time with the family is important. Um, is that's pretty crucial. Um, arrange a time out with people and kind of stick to it. That's where the discipline comes in. Um, maybe if you are at home, um, then turn the TV off. So maybe play a game or just talk, and that's fair enough. Uh, we could do lunch with a colleague. A lot of us are working at home at the moment. As the uh, regs start to break, we've got a possibility where we might be able to meet somebody. And, um, and it was interesting. A friend of mine just lives down the road, just works down the road, very local to me, in fact. And we kind of put something in our diary. And um, we had lunch together on Friday, which was great. Um, and, and I mean, all we did was just sat on a bench and had a sandwich, but it was, really, it was just really good to, just to connect and, and discipline yourself to do that. Um, Visit somebody <laughs> you can, or we, I know we can't visit them in the house, but we certainly can. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. If Tara is a fast breaking in Ramadan, great time for family. Yeah, okay. And that's interesting because that did, obviously that is a key discipline as well, and you're clearly going to stick to it. Um, I, th I thought you just misspelled something there for him, uh, if Tara, every day's a learning day. Uh, volunteer for something. Um, the, the moment there's uh, a lot of people who need help, so there's lots of voluntary things. I mean, you can use tech to connect. But what I balance that off is don't rely on it. Don't rely on tech. Still, actually try and see people. And as we move, I think that's one of the that's one of the things for well-being that we're going to have to um, like think about doing. And we've become very reliant on tech. So make sure we do that face to face and um, and connect with people. Well, that's the first one. The second one is stay active. Um, so stay active, and it doesn't mean I want to do I want to do this early. I want to do the don't do this first. Don't just think that means going to the gym because the gym is not for everybody. Look at me. Uh, but there are things that we can do. And the reason we do it, why it raises our self-esteem, it's good for setting goals um, and achieving. And it will stimulate, I'm not going to go into it because we've got like 10, 15 minutes, but it can stimulate positive um, chemicals which will give you positive feelings. Um, so that's what we're after. Um, so you can do something nice and simple. Um, there's stuff in parks now that you can do, but we can just go for a walk. We can go for a jog. Um, a lot of people started doing couch to 5k um, and you can get little motivational voices there you don't have to be a runner to do couch to 5k i kind of be honest I, I did start that and um i got to a certain point and then when i just go for a good walk that's just as healthy um we can do a bit of cycling uh, a bit of swimming now we can uh, dancing if you want there's loads still online that we can do um important thing is just to start doing something you could buddy up with somebody to do that um, activity as well um I, I was training um, some delegates and and they said something about them um, i don't know if you've heard of this just uh, just tell me if you've heard of it in the chat or give me a thumbs up or something has anybody heard of the blue and green gin the blue green gin anybody know that phrase because somebody i was training and somebody put it up on like a virtual whiteboard and i was like I've, I've got to be honest i don't know what the blue and green gym is and they said it's nature they said just get out into nature the green gym is is the, obviously the grass and the blue gym is the sea so the blue green gym and it's very healthy um so go for a walk and and take in the blue green gym um so there we go i, I learned that as well but stay active do something and this isn't about doing ten thousand steps or anything like that this is just about being active i think one of the things um there's some light shops near me and um i'd always like 18 months ago i'd just get in a car and drive to them and now i go oh, i'm just going to walk all the time now it just seems so much better so that's what i do um Thirdly, learn, um, learn something. Obviously, coming from an LED organisation, we're going to advocate that, but very definitely. Why is it good? It boosts your confidence, gives you a sense of purpose, and it can help you connect with other people. But you can learn loads of things. You could learn cooking. Um, I've tried out some new recipes. Um, I've done all advertised, BBC Good Food, nice recipes. Other websites are available. Um, you could take on a new challenge at work. You could volunteer for something. That would be good. Um, you can do things around the house, DIY on youtube is always there something simple so you could learn to do something there's always something around the house needs doing um there's online colleges and things like that pick up a new hobby 
And again, this doesn't mean about doing a qualification or something like that. It's just about learning to do something new. I pose this question quite a lot. When was the last time you did something for the first time? And that's kind of important. So challenge yourself with that. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Um, the fourth one is about be mindful, um, which is a mass mindfulness and well-being are always spoken about. Um, it can, that'll help you um, enjoy, um, enjoy life, how you approach challenges. But some of the things we can do, um, we can think about, um, we notice our senses. So if you are out staying active, just look look around. And it was really weird because I was out I was out on Sunday and um, I don't know if anybody else, but maybe it was just a London thing. But there's some really beautiful clouds in the sky and um, a couple of us were there and we went, wow, these are really great clouds. And um, I came home and looked on social media and somebody more or less taking the same picture and went, wow, look at the clouds. And it's kind of weird because I'm not always sure I would have noticed those um, a year ago. Um, try and do something regular, routine. Um, I've said about people sometimes get up and go for a walk before they start work, um, just around the block. That can help. Um, think about think about how you're seen and how you're behaving with other people. So some of these thoughts, your your mind can can do bad things to you as well. So thoughts can become words, words can become the actions, actions can become consistency, and kiss consistency becomes legacy. So kind of think about um, what you <laughs> what you're thinking about, and can you move it? Dismiss the past if it's damaging. So so focus on on doing it in a different way. And there's loads of things like apps that you can download on your phone, like Headspace, like Calm, but you could do yoga or Tai Chi, and some of those things are still going on in the park. If they work for you, then great, keep them up. But a lot of like meditation, some people go, I just can't get it. And that's fine. Don't batter yourself into submission for it. But um, again, a lot of delegates I see, you know, Headspace and Calm are probably the most popular apps. And the last one, give to others. Um, it can give you positive feelings, which is important. Um, it can feel rewarding. It can add this sense of purpose. And again, there's connection on it, which is really crucial. So what do we do We're here? Um, or you can volunteer. There's loads of things that, that need it at the moment. Um, you can say thank you to somebody. When was the last time you sent a thank you email at work? Just think about that one. Um, you can listen to your friends, your family, and show genuine interest in them and what they've been doing. Uh, maybe visit a relative or a neighbour who, who maybe has, has had a... A, a bit of loss of contact, things along those lines. Going out Friday evening with a load of friends for the first time, there's a rugby club and they kind of get a pizza project in. There's only just, obviously only just six of us, but you know, it's just like, okay, let's let's get the people there who maybe wouldn't always have access to be able to go somewhere. It's quite safe. You know, someone at a rugby club, get a table, all that, it's all outdoors, so all good. Um, you could potentially help someone with a new skill you've learned. So you could learn and then go visit a relative or a neighbour or something and, and put that skill into action. And whether it be a little bit of gardening, a little bit of DIY, anything along those lines to help. Um, and those are the, the kind of the core things of well-being. So remember those five things. Connect with others, stay active, learn something new, be mindful, and don't forget to give to other people. And those five things are fundamental to your well-being. Now, my question, football, how many... <laughs> How many football teams are affiliated to the, the English FA? Well, <laughs> at, at last count, it was approximately, uh, but it's over this figure, 40,000 football teams. Um, so 40,000 football teams. So it's absolutely staggering amount. So I think the closest is Clara with 3,879. If you'd have put a naught on it, that would have been really good. Maybe you just mistyped. Yeah, nearly 40,000 football teams. It's, we have the largest amount of football teams in the world in the country. And just sit and want to take all the money. Uh, but there we go. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, Bill, <laughs> I, I could probably name 156. I've probably been to 156, actually. Um, anyway, lovely to see you all on this bright, sunny Tuesday afternoon. Have a great week. Take care of yourselves. And I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much for tuning in.